Alex, when you think about the great questions of cosmology or reality in general, uh, maybe even after your work, uh, when you uh, finish the paper that you wrote and you want to be very reflective and really think deeply about these things and, and, and take a step back and look at uh, these magnificent uh, 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 substrate that you deal with in your day-to-day -day life, what are the kinds of questions that you really ask yourself during those times of reflection? <laughs> um, well, I think that the, one of the most uh, grappling questions is the questions about the beginning of the universe. And um, I've been thinking about it uh, for many years. And we uh, cosmologists found answers to it at different levels. Uh, we had a big bang, and then uh, there was inflation. Uh, and I was trying to figure out, uh, can we avoid having a beginning, or, or the beginning of the universe is unavoidable, and in that case, what was it? Mm -hmm. How did the universe begin? So uh, this is uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions yeah. I've been struggling with. Um, another one is, what is the universe like beyond our, our horizon? Um, and uh, the picture we are, that is emerging now from the theory of inflation is that it is very different from what we see in our neighborhood here. The distant parts of the universe are um, probably have very different properties. And uh, this multiverse picture is, uh, of course, very fascinating, but uh, when I first, uh, I and other people like Andre Linde started first discussing it, uh, physicists were complaining that this is not physics, you know, because in physics you have to have a testable theory, you have to uh, uh, do observations, uh, predict uh, observable effects, and of course when we are talking about regions beyond our horizon... By definition. Yeah, by definition you cannot see them. Uh, so people accuse you of the worst possible thing they can say. They call you a philosopher. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, There's no greater insult that a scientist could give, one scientist can give another than to call him a philosopher. I think so. <laughs> um, but I think that, uh, so one of the things I was trying to do is to come up with some indirect tests of um, uh, this multiverse picture. Hmm. Um, and to think about the ways that you can possibly apprehend something that seemingly in principle that you can't get information from. Right. Uh, no direct observation, right, right. but uh, still you can have uh, some indirect, uh, like uh, in court, you can have um, <laughs> circumstantial evidence. Right, right. Um, Maybe let me mention one last thing, which um, sometimes doesn't let me sleep at night. <laughs> and uh, uh, that has to do with cosmic microwave radiation. You know, uh, it has been a great triumph of uh, cosmology, the observation of cosmic microwave, the uh, inhomogeneities, and this pattern of inhomogeneities is in beautiful agreement with theory of inflation. However, there is a glitch there. The, uh, on the largest angular, I mean, this is a distribution of the intensity of radiation over the sphere, over the sky. Yeah. And when you look at the pattern on small scales, it beautifully agrees with inflation. But if you look at what pattern is on the largest scales, like 90 degrees, for example, uh, the intensity vari variation there is significantly lower. Uh, than inflation predicts. I should say that th this pattern is a statistical pattern. Mm -hmm. So we can only calculate probabilities and we could say, okay, it just happens to be so. You calculate how likely it is. Well, it is maybe 0.1%. So we, we may be observing some very unlikely glitch, or maybe it is an indication of some new physics. Or maybe it's an indication that uh, we need to think more about theory of inflation. Does that worry you? Because um, you know human beings are normally follow in group, group ways of thinking. We trace the history of science and paradigm shifts, as uh, 
namesake uh, of mine, or I'm his namesake, Thomas Kuhn talked about a, 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 um, a paradigm shift, and then most scientists go along with it. Do you see inflation possibly as, as being something like that, that, there, that it, there may be some glitch in it and there may be some other explanation? Is that something that worries you? Um, uh, well, there is always the case with, in science, right? We can uh, never prove a theory. Uh, so um, there is always a possibility of some facts turning up that would disagree with that theory. Um, in the case of inflation, uh, I am somewhat hopeful about inflation because um, uh, inflation is in some ways uh, similar to Darwin's theory of evolution in the sense that it offered an explanation to something that people thought cannot be explained, which is the initial conditions of the universe. Uh, physicists thought that, okay, you, you, physics explain how you get from some initial state to later states. No, no, nobody tells you what the initial state should be. And it was like a ridiculous question to ask why the initial state was this and, and not something else. And infl inflation uh, gave an explanation, a very compelling explanation, for a very peculiar initial state at the Big Bang. Um, moreover, despite uh, a lot of effort, uh, nobody really came up with a plausible alternative to inflation in 25 years. Um, so I think this theory just expanded the range of scientific inquiry. Mm -hmm. and. Um, um, so I, I hope it, I think there's a good chance it is on the right track. So you've, you've mentioned the beginning of the universe, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the question of what lies beyond our observable horizon in terms of other parts of the universe and potentially different laws of physics, and then the, uh, the deep nature of inflation and, and uh, the potential consistencies or inconsistencies with all the data, which really underlies some of the other the other two things. It all it all centers back on the, the 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 generative mechanisms for this universe from its beginning and the potential other things. And when you take one step back from all of that, what is it what kind of emotion do you feel when you move away from your own equations and your own conferences and just look at what you're doing? Um uh, well, uh, I, I, I don't know. It's, I, I don't think I should be in awe with what uh, I'm doing, but, uh, but it's, uh, what we are doing is somewhat strange in, in the sense that uh, we find that there is this uh, mathematical structure that underlies the universe, and we are in the process of discovering this structure. Um, and uh, this mathematics describes how the universe evolves. It also seems to describe how the universe came into being. Um, so it's very puzzling. Does this mathematic has some, mathematics has some independent existence uh, of its own in some platonic realm? Um, it's, or, or it is a mere description of the universe. It appears that the development of physics points to the first possibility. 